Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I thought maybe I would do a little bit of using up scraps today. Um, I've been working on a bunch of like vintage book, sketchbook slash plain writing journal kind of journals um, for my holiday market. And these are all of my off cuts of like lovely papers that I've dyed, like coffee lace papers, avocado dotted papers, like all sorts of just different papers that I've dyed that I don't want to um, <clears throat> dispose of. I want to use them for something um, along with a couple of other things that we don't actually need. <laughs> so let's get them out of there. Um, so yeah, I thought we could just do some stamping and uh, just have a little bit of a like use it up and chat kind of evening. It's evening here for me now. It is Sunday night. So I got started. I did a couple on my red dyed paper. This stamp is of all of the um, sign language um, hand symbols. So that is what I'm working on right now. So I'm going to do a few of those. <clears throat> so it has been a bit of a busy week or so. I've... Um, if you've been following my videos this week, I've been posting a few flip throughs of a series of traveler's notebooks that I've been working on. Um, those are going to be popping up throughout the week in the shop. I know this is a little bit of a different way of stamping, but I'm doing it this way because the paper is small and I only want to pick up a certain part of it. And it works actually quite well, so it's all good. Um, we've got a ton of snow today, actually. Lots of snow. We just went for a drive this evening and, um, had some dinner and that was nice. So yeah, the snow has begun. <laughs> Maybe I'll try one more on here to see what we get. These are just kind of um, good like collage fodder. I think I'll just save that a little bit. I have this whole basket I'll show you. Um, so these are, this is like my basket of just little bits and bobs of things. I just added a bunch of little technical drawings to it from um, some books that I've like just made journals out of but I also got like collage paper snippets in here and just all sorts of different things I'm trying to just kind of build this whole like randomness um pile that I can grab from when I'm doing collage <clears throat> okay let's get some different stamps let's see here this is a whole tag. I, don't, I think I don't need one that big. Maybe some smaller ones. Could do some numbers, maybe. I don't have a lot of numbers. Yeah, so it's been a busy week. I'm happy, though, because I have finished, like, what I think is a respectable number of things for the holiday market that I'm participating in. Um... I have like a few more yarns to spin. I think I've got the majority of the setup that I want to do sorted out, which is good because I was kind of like worrying about that. It's been quite some time since I have participated in any kind of like market. So I'm happy about that. Maybe I will just do, actually I'll just do two and I'll give them a little more space here. There we go. <clears throat> and I have um, some plain journals that I completed today and yesterday that are just like plain. Um... Let me move this out of the way. I don't have a very good preview today because my phone is um, in need of a charge, so I don't have my preview on. So I know I need to probably be a little closer to the center here because I'm more than likely not on film. Okay, there we go. What was I saying? Yeah, so I've got stuff done for the show and I think I've even figured out what I'm going to use um, as my setup. How I want to set things up. 
I'll just make a pile back here of things. Um, let's get a few more papers here. And this week, my in-laws, who had been staying with us for a couple of weeks, went home. And it's weird, the house is like a little more quiet. I kind of miss them already. They're actually, I'm very lucky. I have really awesome in-laws. I'm really blessed that way. Um, those are light, but I like them. So, yeah, so they have gone home now. The house is a little more quiet. Um... I went to a fun little, I went to a show, um, a, a music show with my daughter to go see Buffy St. Marie and um, their opener, who is this uh, group I'd never heard of before called White Horse. And they're another Canadian group, really lovely. They're a married couple and they're like a folk kind of, like a folk kind of rock music band. And they were so talented, like super great singers and really funny, like great sense of humor. Um, that's another thing that I love about Buffy is she has an amazing sense of humor. The concert itself was awesome. It was like really like really inspiring, really nostalgic. And it was the first time that I've been able to take my daughter to um, a concert since she was like two Though there was a, one disappointing part um, that I guess I'll talk a little bit about because I think it's going to sort of color my decision making over the next while as I'm feeling a little bit like a little less safe right now because of the whole COVID situation. Like I think I was feeling a little safer and my daughter's going to be able to get vaccinated um, actually tomorrow. It was supposed to be uh, yesterday, but she came down with sort of like a 24 hour sniffle kind of thing. And I didn't want to risk in case, but she's fine now. Um, but that kind of brings me to my point, which is like, for me, my husband and I and our kids, we don't eat at restaurants or anything like that. I think we're a little more cautious, call it paranoid, call it what you will. Really. I think we all have our own opinions on what we do. Um, but we haven't done that. And so I had a really nice experience taking my daughter to a theater show in our town um, to see Little Shop of Horrors. And it was really nicely distanced. Like they put four seats between um, each group. They limited groups to four. Masks were on. Um, it felt really great. So this time around, I thought, okay, you know, I feel like confident because we had that great experience. So I thought I would take the opportunity to take her to the Buffy St. Marie show, but it wasn't unfortunately the same experience. Um, so when we got there, we had to wait in the cold for a bit outside lined up, which was totally fine. Not a big deal. <clears throat> um, so we waited it out, we got inside, and I had, on purpose, I had purchased tickets for a balcony seat because there's only four seats on the balcony and two of them were empty, so it would just be her and I. You know, I paid a premium for that seating, certainly. Um, so, you know, but I felt good about it because... She is, like I mentioned, five years old and unvaccinated until tomorrow. So I wanted that, you know, extra kind of safety for her, me, everyone. And so when we got there, the first ticket taker person had said to me, oh, you know, great news. Buffy has upgraded everyone's tickets to floor seating. And I said, um okay like I didn't really think much about it but I was like what you know not really knowing what that meant um 
So then we went to go to like where our ticket told us to go to the balcony section. And the next person had a very different tone of voice and said to me, oh, uh, sorry, the balconies are closed. I said, well, OK, what does that mean? Because I have balcony tickets. So they ended up essentially forcing us to all sit in what I would call almost the nosebleed rows, <laughs> like the like um, the alphabetical A to Z. It was rows like. S, T, like, and U, I think. Anyways, toward the back. Still, you know, you can see the stage. It's a very, it's kind of a small theater, but I was more stressed about the fact that, like, um, we would be in closer proximity to other people, which I did not want. So that kind of made my anxiety go through the roof a little bit at first. Um, but when we got to where we were to be seated, the lady was very understanding. Like, I didn't want to make a scene, of course, um, you know. So I I just sort of said to her, like, you know, this is kind of disappointing that, you know, you would allow a performer to make a decision for everybody. And my reasons are not about good seating. They're about, you know, isolation and protecting my, my health. My, I have an unvaccinated child with me. And she said, I completely agree with you. The decision was made this afternoon. Um, you know, I really apologize. And I said, well, you know, obviously not your fault nothing you can do but you know thanks so we went and sat down and um at first like you know I sat four seats away from the next people but then people came and sat behind us and they'd taken their masks off even though you weren't supposed to people just do whatever they want it's very very annoying at times so um I was like okay I'm gonna have to just figure this out and we'll figure it out. We'll manage it. Um, so then, these are weird stamps. Let me think. How would this go? Okay. So basically, it was fine. What ended up happening was um, that section wasn't sold out. So honestly, like my friend mentioned to me that she's imagining that it probably wasn't even Buffy who made this request. She feels like it was more than likely the theater not wanting to staff and sanitize the balconies. And that wouldn't surprise me. Um, but the other thought that I had too was maybe Buffy felt kind of paranoid to be like singing and not having a mask on and maybe she just didn't want to have people breathing down on her from the balcony which I would also understand so you know like I don't go into anything without taking other people's mindsets into consideration right I'm, I'm trying not to like be privileged here <laughs> so <sighs> all of that being said it was fine because the three rows that were like set up for us to sit in they weren't full. And then they had actually reserved the row in front of us um, totally empty. So I'm guessing that was just in case of this issue. So as it turned out, my daughter had to use the washroom and then we couldn't even get back into the row that we were in without making a bunch of people have to stand up. So we just sat in the completely empty row. So thankfully I was able to have a safe distance between us and other people. Um, but it has now made me, you know, a lot more shy about what I do. I don't want to be in a situation like that again where I lose control over, you know, what's happened and, and my expectations don't get met, you know, because it's just too important right now. So I think I will forego those kind of events. I think some other things will be okay, but not that for now. So... Just something to think of if you are venturing back out into this world a little bit and you're feeling kind of like me. Um, but we had a wonderful time. The show was amazing. I was able to pick up um, a nice, a couple of CDs and a vinyl um, at the end of the night and it was great. Buffy St. Marie is an incredible performer. If you are not familiar with her, she is a indigenous Canadian singer who has an incredible career um, that spans many, well my, my whole life really um, she is like a I think she would identify as like a hippie um, she is like a I would say an activist and a real um, inspiration for women 
She made many appearances on Sesame Street when I was a kid. She was like the first woman to breastfeed on television on Sesame Street with her baby. Um, she does this really fun song called Cripple Creek with this um, like Jim Henson like horse puppet on. It's one of my favorite Sesame Street episodes. And she sings beautiful music, and she's also a great songwriter. I had no idea that, what's the song called, like, Love Lift Us Up Where We Belong? So she wrote that song. I didn't even know that, but um, it, it earned her, I believe, a, a Grammy for Joe Cocker and another woman singing it from some movie, like... I don't know the movie. It was something like A Gentleman or something. I don't remember. But yeah, I had no clue that she sang that song, but she does. And she sang it and it was really nice. And she did a lot of like war protest, anti-war kind of music, which was really great. And um, she also was talking about how like when she was like a young teenager and she was supposed to be, um, she was supposed to be like, doing her homework or something or ironing her school clothes but instead she wasn't because she discovered like rockabilly radio <laughs> and so she was like in the basement of her home and um listening to rockabilly radio so I'm guessing she's probably like in her 60s now I don't know for sure but she's like I finally wrote my own rockabilly song and man did she ever perform it like she was amazing. I was so like, wow, <laughs> she's amazing. So I was happy to be there. So despite a little bit of weirdness, it was still really great. But I think we are planning to kind of cocoon a little bit again, just because like, I don't know, I feel like things have gotten a little too loose. Our cases here are quite high. They're over 700 a day now and they've been climbing for quite some time. But like the confusing thing of it all is the way the government is acting because it's like they're opening everything and they're pushing us toward normalcy and I don't know it all feels like denial and now we're hearing about this Omicron or Omicron or whatever variant I haven't heard it said yet I have been avoiding the news so I have not heard it verbally said yet so pardon me if I'm mispronouncing it but yeah um I don't know I just feel like everything that I'm hearing lately is like in direct opposition with common sense <laughs> And maybe we're all feeling that way and we don't know what to do. Perfectly understandable, I think. So I think I'm just going to like be a little cautious. It's, it's you know, winter's here and typically winter means more colds and flus anyways. I still have to get my flu shot. I need to do that. They did not have them at my doctor's office when I checked last time, but I understand that the pharmacies have them now, so I can probably book it at a pharmacy. But I'm also kind of concerned, so I know I'm talking a lot about the whole, the whole world situation, and maybe that won't appeal to some of you, but I think we're all human, and this is a condition that we're sharing right now, so we, can, we should be able to talk about it. Um, so... There's another issue that I'm kind of worrying about here, and that's that, like... Unfortunately, our provincial government is very, very much wanting to, like, privatize our healthcare system. I swear that's, like, really the root of my my frustration these days. And um, so they've authorized pharmacies now to give um, COVID tests to people who have symptoms. So it used to be that they couldn't. And so one major pharmacy, actually my pharmacy, the chain of pharmacies that I get my prescriptions at, has signed on for this. And I'm super uncomfortable about it because I feel like people have no choice but to go to a pharmacy to get their medication sick people who are suffering from anything from you know cancer to Im immune disorders all sorts of things and now when they go there they can't be guaranteed that they won't come across somebody who is a symptomatic carrier 
So personally, that makes zero sense to me. I'm frustrated by the whole idea of it. Another major chain here has said that they will not participate, so I'm probably going to be switching to that pharmacy. Um, Because, yeah, why risk when you don't need to? Why? But, it, yeah. These are the days that we're living. I'm going to see if I can try to just print all the way across that using the whole stamp and not have to fiddle with it. <clears throat> so I'd love to know how things are going in your country like what's making you feel good what's making you feel bad I really hope that all of this is over soon truly I do but we'll see so what else is new and exciting in my life? Um, <laughs> not much. Um, not much other than the fun of that concert. Okay, there we go. I watched um, the latest podcast from... Barbara at 49 Dragonflies today, the Junk Journal podcast with Rhonda Winstead and Louisa Heinzel, and it was really nice. It was really heartfelt, and um, yeah, it was very touching to watch. I have to commend Barbara for her efforts, like in doing all the series that she does, as well as all of the networking that she does. It's really a great idea. I wish I had more time for networking. I also feel bad because like <laughs> as a smaller YouTuber with little to no time to like network, I don't really get myself out there as much as many others. And I know that I, I, I feel mostly bad just because like, I'd like to be like leaving more comments for people on their YouTube channels. But to be honest, I watch YouTube mostly on devices where I can't comment like my I have um, like an echo show that I have down here actually on this desk. So when I'm working, I can watch YouTube videos um, or on my television. So <laughs> it makes it a little harder for me to comment. But I do sometimes try to like track back just to say something from time to time. So you, so people know like I'm watching and that I, you know, want to say hello Um yeah, but that's okay. I will hopefully participate in more things in the future when life isn't so busy, but it's just kind of busy. Okay. I need another stamp. Not this one. Maybe this one. Is this a big one? I think it is, yeah. I don't want to deal with another big one right now. Mushrooms, butterflies. This is kind of cool. It's like steampunky body parts. What do we have here? Leaves. Leaves might be good. I'll do leaves. Or maybe some maple seeds and other. There's lots of good stuff here. have I been listening to? Oh, so I listened to an episode of a Gimlet podcast that I really like called Crime Show. And it was, it's, it's like an episode, or it's a podcast that like kind of investigates weird, interesting crimes. And I like it. Like it's, um, it's not like, I would say it's not true crime. It's kind of a little different. So <laughs> I listened to one today that was really neat. It was about a woman named Mary Wash. And she is this, like, amazing singer. And so she has this awesome voice that, like, it's the kind of voice that, you know, grew up on gospel, then, like, 
got into like you know soul and rock and like she grew up at a time that you know she was exposed to like a lot of great music and uh, so she's an amazing vocalist so she was this great singer and she had gotten um, she is one of the singers from the weather girls so if you know the song it's raining men so the funny thing is she got popular right around the time that MTV started and this is kind of a story about like video killed the radio star kind of like the whole you know how music the music industry became visual when that happened because music videos were like the new you know part of like your music listing experience so you know unfortunately we live in a culture of an impossible like beauty myth and all of that and so she kind of became a victim of all of that basically they felt that her image wasn't sellable because as she said herself you know I'm a bigger woman so you know the record industry didn't know what to do with two curvy women black women so they just did nothing and they eventually like the the song was a hit um but after that they were essentially like dropped they made that one video which had almost no budget and they kind of tried to make them look like older women but they were both in their 20s at the time so all of that being said i mean very disappointing um you know she is this incredible singer so like the it's raining men song was written by paul schaefer and um he he knew Mary and he asked her to come in and record it because he had tried to get some other like famous singers um, like Cher and Barbara Streisand. I can't imagine Barbara Streisand singing It's Raining Man. It would be so strange. So she, she had tried to get them to record this and both of them declined. So he asked Mary to come in because at the time she was doing a lot of like demo recording where um, professional singers, they record like demo songs for songwriters so that that songwriter can then sell the song in the market basically. So the songwriter does not own the rights to the actual music that's produced by the demo singer, but they can use it to demo the song to get a final vocalist to pick it up. So one day Mary is listening to the radio and it's just like some, you know, pop music, whatever. And all of a sudden she hears this deep, you know, voice kind of song and she recognizes the voice as her own. So it ends up being um, that popular song by CNC Music Factory. Um, let me see if I can bring it up. Echo, Google CNC Music Factory. So Searching like, Google. So like they were a popular music group in the 90s and they really had like one major hit. <laughs> and um, hold on, let me see. I gotta, you know, it's funny. It literally just searched for C. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. What are you doing, machine? So, like, the vocals in this song are, like, really crazy. Um, let me see if I can find the video really quick. So it was that song, Everybody Dance Now. Let me see if I can play a little clip of it. And you can just hear it. <laughs> yeah. So, my technology is fighting with me right now. I don't know why. Play, my friend. Okay. So, you hear that? Okay. So, that's enough of that. So, that everybody dance now, okay? When you watch this video, you're going to see this really thin, leggy, you know, beautiful by society standards woman singing to this song. As it turns out, that's not 
her voice. It's Mary Wash's voice. And the other guy in the band, not the rapper, but like the other guy who wears a turtleneck, if you've ever seen the video, um, his name was like Joe or Cole or something. And he was the one who had originally asked Mary to come and like perform a demo of this song for him because he was starting a new group. So as it turns out, like he essentially just stole it, used it, and they faked the whole thing. And this was like on the heels of the whole Millie Vanilli scandal, like those two Euro guys who had that song Blame It on the Rain. And as it turned out, they didn't sing that song either. <laughs> and so the humiliation that the record companies as well as those brothers went through was actually pretty epic and kind of like career ending and expensive. The fans actually, I didn't know this, but the fans of Milli Vanilli actually had a like class action lawsuit against them. So yeah, craziness. So, um, anyhow, so Mary ended up not only getting ripped off by them, but also by this other group called Black Box, which was um, also like a popular song at the same time. And like they they also stole her like they stole her um, her music or like her her track. And it was the song Everybody, Everybody. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. I can probably play a little clip of this and not get in trouble for YouTube. <laughs> We'll see. La 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 la. Okay. Do you hear this? song also Mary Wash and we have another thin woman you know singing her song <laughs> using her voice it's just crazy so I have to try to fix this stamp hold on <laughs> okay that's okay so anyhow there is like a little bit I would say of you know reckoning that happens because Mary has this nice friend and he is like a lawyer and a manager in, in the business and he essentially gets like her you know the money she's owed she gets a record deal she gets credit for her music so it all works out in the end and it actually was like a trailblazing case um for the music industry to be able to kind of protect artists a little bit better so all of that is good news um but yeah, how frustrating that, you know, someone with such an amazing voice, like, gets judged because, like, they just decide that her image isn't good enough. Although, I think that's probably super common in, you know, many industries, entertainment industry, and it's really not good. But then toward the end of it, the show was talking about how like the next like level of all this is going to be the concept of like deep fakes. So you've probably seen if you follow politics that like there's been a lot of videos where like they will make a fake video of like Barack Obama saying something. It's not actually him, though. It's his voice being like synthesized with AI to um, to like make it look like he's saying something that he's not. So. The similar, the similar thing is happening in the music industry. Like there's a video on YouTube right now that is like synthesized from Jay-Z's voice and it's a rap song. And so I guess he tried to have it taken down. Like he took action to have it taken down, but basically from what the podcast said, like YouTube washed their hands of it and said that, um, you know, he has to prove the case more that like there's nothing they can do because essentially like laws don't exist right now for this kind of thing. So yeah, just some weird, interesting stuff. I enjoyed listening to the podcast. I thought it was pretty cool. All right. I think that's enough of these ones. Um, okay. 
I try to keep these in these little sleeves, but I really don't like the sticky, the sticky bit. I need to organize all this. <laughs> yeah, I always do this to the envelope, but then I just kind of tear it open and use it as like a, a folder. I need to organize these better one day soon. I will get there one day. I don't want to use that one. There's like a moth in here I think I want to use. Maybe a bee. So, um, what else can I tell you I've been doing or looking at? I've been following this new account on Instagram that's got my brain kind of working a little bit. And, um, it's nothing to do with art or craft or anything. And I'm just like getting personal today because why not, right? Um, <laughs> so it's called Foster the Teens and it's this lovely woman who like, she's a foster parent for teenagers. And she's in the United States and um, I have to say, I really like her. She is a cool person who is doing really good things. So if you're interested in learning more about fostering a teenager or fostering in general, I recommend you follow her because she has a lot of great tips for people who are interested or who want to know more about it. Okay. Pretty, pretty. Actually, I'll do a few more of those. It's a nice moth. And I feel like this weekend went by so quickly. I think it's because I didn't get a lot of sleep. And I always feel like a bit weird when I don't get any restorative kind of sleep on the weekend. Because my sleep is just so bad lately. I don't know. Hopefully it will sort itself out once the seasons fully change. I really struggle with insomnia when the seasons change. And also... Um, not a big fan of daylight savings time. <laughs> I would be happy to just completely do away with it. I don't know. It's kind of nutty to me why we even have daylight savings time. I know that it was like, it came from, I believe, like essentially capitalism <laughs> to try to like make people shop more and be awake during more light hours to consume. Um, but that being said, I think a lot of people every year get very sick. There's like a, an increase in heart attack events and things like that around daylight savings time. I'm just going to clean this stamp block off because it's got lots of ink on it, as do my fingers always. Um, I did a ton of paper dyeing today, cabbage dyeing and other stuff some teal colored papers like light teal because I've been really going through my dyed papers for these um, journals that I've been making that are just like vintage books that are kind of iconic like Hardy Boys as well as those ones if you watched my last um, Friday book haul I got these like vintage electronics type books I made several of those into like blank journals slash sketchbooks that are just filled with these papers that you're seeing me stamp on these dyed papers um so I think those will be good let me see Get some thicker paper for this for this B there it is I have to replenish my paper stash. I was listening to Sunnyside Journal video the other day and she was talking about how like her, her method of getting papers dyed is like, it's actually very smart. Every morning when she makes a pot of tea for herself and her spouse, um, she has like a cup left over. So she just dies a few pages that day. So it's like a slow building of her stash, which is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Let's 
So December is almost upon us. <sighs> I don't think I'll be doing December dailies. I'm not sure. I was a little intrigued this morning after listening to um, the podcast that 49 Dragonflies did. Um, as Louisa Heinzel mentioned that they're doing something fun and big, like a collaborative kind of thing for December dailies this year. Whoops. That would be my phone. Um, so yeah, I may look at that. I may jump in. I, I have a hard time sticking with a lot of challenges because I'm just busy and I actually have some of my own series planned for this upcoming year. Um, I may actually start them a little sooner. Um, one of them at least, because I just want to get started on something a little different soon. Do I like any of these for this? Maybe butterflies, some butterflies. I like these ones. Um, I think that the biggest thing that I stuck with in 2021 in terms of a challenge was like the, um, 52 tags handmade from Ann Brooke. <clears throat> I actually stuck that one out, which was good. Because now I have this beautiful collection of 52, well, almost 52 tags. I'll do a video of them, like a flip through of all my tags at the end of the year. As I imagine a lot of people will do. Hopefully there's a hashtag for it so that we can like all look at each other's 52 tags. Good for butterflies. But yeah, I'm planning a couple of series. I may start one of them tomorrow even. I'm still, as you can tell, not really working on much of a schedule for this channel. I look at it like this. Just, you know, follow along and I will do stuff and... If you like it, watch it. If you don't, you know, I'll see you next time. <laughs> but hopefully I do enough stuff that, you know, you find interesting and you'll stick with me because um, it's nice to have a little community. So I need to, again, clean this because yucky. Then I need more paper and I need a new stamp. Grab some more of this paper. And what do we have here? Those are a little big for this. This is definitely big. Um, yeah. I need little things like these, maybe these little tickety type things. Let's do some of these. doing some postage stamp type things. Also found my daughter a skating guide this week which is good it's like this thing that your kids can when they're learning to skate they can hold on to it almost looks like a walker and it's like really great for um you know preventing falls when kids are learning to skate so I found one actually while thrifting which was great because I was going to go to play it against sports and look for one and then I ended up finding one 
and it was marked six dollars and it was 50 percent off purple tags so i got it for three dollars and that is awesome because they are about thirty dollars new there's just like so much kids equipment like that that i'm like I don't want to pay a lot of money for because like you use it for such a short amount of time. I also feel that way about children's shoes, although I usually buy new shoes. I don't enjoy buying new shoes. I don't buy, <laughs> enjoy buying children's shoes at all because they use them for such a short amount of time. I have benefited though from having two kids because I kept a lot of things from my first child that I can use for my second child so I don't have to buy as much of that silly stuff <laughs> um, I think this one and maybe the square Wait. I just don't want them to be too close together and I need a larger piece of paper are nice eco printed watercolor papers so I think that'd be good for collage this is black walnut uh, dye which is probably one of my favorite dyes to dye paper with to be honest it's hard to explain like it gives really nice browns and it has no smell and it doesn't mold easily at all, um, like as a dye if you're storing it. Um, so it's got a good shelf life and it just does something with the paper that like, it's hard to explain, like the paper doesn't wrinkle up as much for some reason as when you use coffee or tea. I have no idea why, but like if you compare, you know, like, hmm, if I can show you, but here's something, like, this is coffee dyed paper, and it was with a doily, and you can probably see that it's not flat, like, I didn't press any of these, but this paper, it's, like, extremely flat, it's hard to explain, but it just, I don't know, and it also softens the paper in a really nice way, and you can get really different browns. Like this paper almost looks like maybe parts of it look burned, but it's not burned. Um, you just can get different nice colors. Okay, so that's enough right now. The bat, I think I'll get a different color of paper and do another one of these tickets, maybe on this blue. I hear little feet upstairs, so that must mean that bath time is over. Try to get reading with my daughter a little tonight because we're falling behind on a bit of reading that we wanted to do because she wasn't feeling so good. So, but she's feeling a lot better now, thankfully. on those for now. Oh, these are so annoying. I'm just going to 
to cut the sticky part off because really what I want is just this clear envelope to keep this in. I don't need it to be sealed. I just like to keep these acrylic sets together because it just makes things easier. I have like, I used to do letter boxing back in the, uh, the olden times <laughs> when that was still a thing. Um, and I have a lot of old like acrylic stamps from back then that I used to use and like I didn't keep them organized as I do nowadays with these kind of stamps and they're kind of a nightmare to, to deal with. They all stick together and yeah. Let's just cut this one now so that I don't try to put it back in there again. Okay. This one. Hmm. I'll do this day ticket. And Maybe this little place stamp here. There we go. I did not set a timer. I have no idea how long I've been recording. <laughs> wow. Oh, I put the stamp on upside down. <laughs> I need a nap. Okay, so the stamp is on upside down <laughs> for that one. Let's try it again. <laughs> okay, that's better. <laughs> uh, wakey, wakey, Cindy. Where is my water? Here it is. My apologies. Also, stay hydrated. It's important. Okay. So I'm starting to get the feeling the holiday vibes. We drove around a little bit tonight and looked at all of the holiday lights on the houses. And I find for me, like, I used to really get the most kind of, it would start to feel like Christmassy going into like shopping malls and seeing all the lights and the big trees and the decorations. That would usually is what would make me feel like, okay, it's Christmassy. I don't know. I think most people I'm talking to these days are having like a harder time getting into it right now because of everything going on. I'm trying to decide on a lot of things that I want to do this year in terms of how to celebrate, who to celebrate with, what to do, what to cook, presents, everything. I'm just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> It's just a little weird right now, but we'll figure it out. Okay, that and that. And then I wanted to do some of this one. I like this one. Okay. And I gotta find paper wide enough to handle that stamp, which I don't think these ones are, no. Let's get this. Hmm. 
No. Here's some. Mm, I'm just looking for a lighter color if I have any lighter colors. Okay. A lot of these are eco printed papers because that's what I've been working with. not really doing what I'm hoping. It's okay though, we'll use those. Okay, I'm going to switch to a different stamp. different, slightly different postal stamp type things. Let's do some of these ones. Different postmarks. Okay. Doesn't come out very nice. That's good. Oops, I got too close to the edge. <laughs> I might cut these into like different shapes as I use them. I may cut closer to the shape of the stamp. I may cut this into a circle, but at least I have it as like kind of collage fodder. <laughs> so it's there so I can use it. I think I'll switch stamps now. I might try using these four 
little circles. What do these say? Mm, yeah, okay. They're just generic kind of. Mm, maybe I'll just do three so I have a little bit of space in between them. I'm not too close together. I don't know if I mentioned this, but my children got like a karaoke set up for their birthday. I've got to get that all set up this week. That should be fun. <laughs> it's actually kind of cute listening to my daughter sing and my son like talking to the microphone. It's pretty cute. Okay, this one. And maybe this bigger one. You have room for both of those there. Yeah, just. Okay. I can move this one over a little bit. There we go. Hmm. I like this one. The cameo, like I like that one. The other one, it has some sort of trouble. It's not printing there. I'm gonna take it off, I think, and try it by itself. So I'll do this and then do a few of these and then we'll go back to the other one. Sometimes I think the stamps can be a little bit of a different height and they can mess each other up and that might be what's happening I just want to do one more of these because I really like her okay sorry about that I think I just had to swap out my battery because again I have no clue how long I've been filming so I'm probably like running way over. That's okay though. <laughs> All right I'll try this one and then I'll probably call it a video because we've got quite a pile of things I have completed. All right. There we go. That's better. I think it was just um, the other stamp made it a little too uneven. Okay. Do another one of those on blue. Okay, there we go. So that is it, I think, for me for today. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to me jabber on about all sorts of things and get through some of my scrap cutoffs here from the journals that I've been making. Um, I'm anticipating that hopefully this week I can get started on a new series that I want to work on for this channel, and that will be fun. If not, I'll be back with something. I'll always be doing something here. Um, like this video that was just kind of a last minute thought on my mind because I had some supplies to use up and I do tend to turn on the camera when things like this kind of come to me because why not? Maybe it will give you an idea of how to use up some of your scraps. Just use them up by stamping on them and throw them in a basket for collage fodder for later so that you have some ready-made supplies because that's always a helpful thing 
when you're making a lot of projects, as I am right now. I'm working on um, a custom made, a custom order and um, some holiday stuff, stocking stuff for type stuff and other bits and bobs. So anyhow, um, please check out the description box below this video to find all of my social media information. Um, I typically film at least once a week. So if you would like to see more of my stuff, please subscribe. I'd love to have you around. Leave me a comment. Let me know that you're here. Um, and yeah, thank you again. And we will talk soon. I hope you have a really lovely beginning to your week and that everything goes well. And um, these inky fingers need some soap. So I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.